morning my friends we're back again together and we're going to do some more cool stuff and possibly today um if i have a chance i'll probably do some more stuff on reference drawing but right now what i'm going to do what i'm going to do right now is just i'm going to go back on my old stuff and correct um because unfortunately sometimes you notice that whoa Oh, I didn't do this right. And um, there's some drawings that needs to be fixed. So I'm going to fix this one right here. And let me get my... Um, so that way it'll hold it. So this, this, was, this was the last one I was fixing yesterday. And it came out pretty good. So I'm going to fix this one. And let me see what else we got here. Okay. Now, there are some old drawings here that I got to be very, very careful when I fix it. Because when you erase, um, it kind of smudges a lot. You know, especially if you're using the black pencil. Not so much the, you know, I, I, I guess I can do... I can actually fix the ones that are in pencil, but the ones that have black pencil is going to be a little bit harder to fix. So I'm going to make this like an, sort of like a ghost image. It's like you can see the drawing, but you don't see it entirely. So I'm going to make it into a ghost image. And the reason why I'm doing it like a ghost image is because I want to make sure... I get all these little details when I draw the face. So, um, I'm going to imagine that I'm seeing either the Loomis method or the regular oval method. But right now I'm doing sort of sort of like the, the Loomis method. And from there on, I'm going to start fixing... So this mouth is a little bit too high. So I'm gonna like keep erasing it more. So the mouth should be around here. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to indicate where that chin is. And then the mouth will be just a little bit low. So then the nose will be around here. Once I do the nose, I'm going to do sort of like a triangle. So my eyes are going to be underneath here. So the this will be the eye line here. And then I'm going to do the eyebrow here. So I'm going to do the same technique that we did yesterday. That is sort of like you're working from the bottom up. And I actually numbered this. So, from the chin, I'm going to do the jaw. Uh, give me a minute, guys. My door seems to be making noise. For some reason or something, the uh, the wind ca actually pushes the door and it makes noise. So I have to like lock it up so that way it won't make too much noise. And the reason why I'm starting starting early is because late in the afternoon it just gets so noisy around here. So I rather do this early in the morning or late late in the night time. Okay, so um, this will be part of his face right here. Then. I got the nose, and then right here would be the temple. So, now I can start working with, um, you know, the features. 
Let's work with the bridge of the nose. So I'm going to do it in pencil first, and then after that, what I'm going to do is work at it with uh, black pencil. the ears G lines I just want to make sure I get top of the head done right do the planes so always go back to your drawings and see if you can sort of like fix your drawings make it better here is his eyebrows but it's sort of like going down and they're sort of like sharp claw teeth coming from the eyebrows so this is sort of like a one of those mutant characters that I just actually came from my head the bottom of the lip and maybe I'll do like some type of ring on this part of the lip so we could actually imagine pretend that this could be a civilization that started after some type of nuclear holocaust and some humans remain and then at the same time half of the humans became you know cannibalist i don't know if i'm saying that right cannibalist and i could imagine if something like that were to happen um that we actually go through some type of nuclear holocaust and half of the human race. I would guess everything will start all over again, just like uh, the early um, caveman times. Well, then people will start attacking each other instead of with guns, probably with sticks and bones. Um, but you just never know what's going to happen. I know... Um, I don't know if you guys ever seen Mad Max, the movie. So basically, if you look at the movie, Mad Max is all about the uh, the after effect of a nuclear war or something. And then there were some survivors. Many of them were insane in the head. Many of them were tribes. And uh, yeah, the law still existed, but little by little it started fading away. If you look at all the mad... The Mad Max movies. I thought it's called, yeah, Mad Max. You know, believe it or not, those are the only movies that I haven't even gotten yet. Um, Mad Max. The original one was awesome. Um, it had a great plot. It was great. The first Mad Max movie by uh, Merle Gibson. Um... But then again, when they started making the sequel and all that, I just didn't like it. I don't know. It didn't... It just seemed a little bit, I don't know, weird for me. Uh, the first Mad Max movie was way better. So, yeah. So, if something like a some type of nuclear, you know, holocaust would happen, I, I guess it would probably change everything. And probably government would actually won't even exist anymore or maybe some type of <laughs> underground government something still have my allergies and my cold was exposed to a lot of air conditioning last night but so it's coming out pretty good And then I'm going to do some more details. And then after that, what I'm going to do is, because I forgot what I had here. I think it was just more like scars 
in like sort of like, spi like a spiral scar that I made on this side of his face. And of course, uh, this eye here is sort of like uh, a little bit closed because of course he has a damaged part of his face over here. So it's kind of like damage on this part. So since this guy is bald, I got to be careful doing this guy. And let's just make him look like he has like a five o'clock shadow on his face or something. Especially underneath the nose. We just kind of like shade it in a little bit. So yeah, that's my specialty. I like to create and draw all kinds of mutant characters. And like I mentioned before yesterday, if you really like character design, you should check out um, Carrie Gamow's book, Drawing Comics for Film and all that stuff. It's a great book. And uh, you can get a lot of great ideas from that book. Also, the book I showed you yesterday, which is the um, Horror Tarot book. So I'm going to do something creative like his collar a little bit different maybe he's got some type of um, ornament some type of device ornament here on his neck just want to make sure I get this right and soon what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do character design you know character design doing the body, especially the um, the costume. Like for example, I'm doing this character. I created this character, but I haven't done <clears throat> like the rest of his clothes. What I do is I kind of like sometimes do a hint, like underneath, you know, underneath his neck. And then of course I have to shade this in because of, there's a lot of cast shadow and underneath the jaw. I just want to make sure I have the um, the beard in place. And let's fix the mouth. I don't know if I'm doing this part correct because I'm so used to using the Loomis method. Um, but it works. I mean, you know, I just got to make it work. As long as it looks like a half human comic book face more like a little bit realism because I like to get into the realism I'm not so much into the cartooning aspect of um, drawing faces that look like you know cartooning or like even though that is important you know you uh, it's always good to draw a little bit of everything of course and I've challenged myself sometimes I come out with some pretty cool cartoon comic book characters but I like to do more like the realistic look more like uh, Alex Ross kind of and I know I keep mentioning that Alex Ross is very very close to I would say uh, Andrew Loomis and Norman Rockwell the way Norman Rockwell would draw so I'm gonna maybe make it yeah just make this a little bit darker can't even hear myself talk sometimes because I clogged my ear when I blew my nose oh my lord I know there's a technique for that you can actually get rid of the clogging in your ears but it's always happening on my left side of the ear every time when I blow my nose so I'm trying to like um, speak myself here, but I can hardly hear half of what I'm saying. Maybe if I drink some water. Let's 
could be many of the medications I take that give you these crazy side effects. I'm going to actually do a little bit <clears throat> more details right here on this side of his face. And then I forgot to render in the um, eyelid. So just um, do more cast shadow around the eyes, especially on this side. Let me get a bigger pencil because um, this is the thing when these pencils start getting smaller I'll probably use it for the shading but to draw I definitely need a bigger pencil so I'm going to see if I can find another black pencil I know I bought like probably three just got to open this a little bit and see what I got here Buy more. Yeah. And I got some extra needed eraser. are great great pencils these are by faber castell and i think it's from germany it says it's here yeah black 199 um it's got like three stars here very good especially when you're doing details um you can actually use it for shading also but for now i'm going to use for shading i'm going to use this one since this one i still and i think i got another one here which let me see Yeah, I do have another one, but it's actually small, so I'm going to throw this one away. It's so small, so maybe I shouldn't throw it away. And just, I'll buy some more this week. And they don't cost that much. They cost like probably like two or three bucks. Uh, actually, three, no, two dollars. They don't cost that much. Um... Let me see if I can open this. You know what? This is what I hate about these needed erasers. That it's so hard to open these. Um, and this is just going to kill the time. All right. I'm just going to stick with the white eraser and the pencil eraser. But let's see if I can open this. Because what's good about the needed eraser is that you can roll it up and uh, start erasing you know make your drawing like us sort of like a ghost image and uh, this is a different type of a needed eraser this is not like a soft eraser I don't know why I bought this I gotta get me I have to go back to the art shop and ask them hey I need the original needed eraser that you can actually bend very easy but these you can't even bend I don't know why I can't bend these so I'm just gonna have to like rip it up apart or something and it erases the only problem is you got to be careful with the the black pencil that stays with it so yeah I'm gonna go back and ask him to give me a better needed eraser Okay, so this looks like like it's really nice and sharp, so I don't think this is going to give me any problems. And the nostrils are going to make it a little bit darker. Now 
looks better. Okay, so I'm going to leave it alone for now. And uh, maybe I'll do something with this face. Let's, let's see what I could do with this. This was something that I did by using, um, I think it was the Serpino technique, and I'm not really sure. Uh, this is totally something different, and I can't remember what technique this was. But anyway, um, let's see what we can do with this. Let's erase some of these construction lines. Do something different with this. Um, I'm going to transform it into probably a David Finch method. That's what I'll do. Just. And one of, you know, a tip that. You know, one of my tricks, I would say, that when I'm drawing, I'm actually seeing the face form in my mind. You know, it's like, you know, you train your eye to see once you're doing the nose. Well, you, you know, you have the, um, the constructions, you know, the guidelines that's going to help you out. That's the first thing that you need. And then little by little, you train your eye to see, you know, the nose here the temple part of the side of the face here. And you're going to know that this goes in because of the eye socket right here. And then the planes. And uh, this will be, there's a name for this part, which is actually the, the corner of the eye, which most artists actually use this, like um, Richmond would use something like this. And then you bring it straight down to where the chin is. So I'm going to try to make this like an old man or something. And then I'm going to have the mouth right here. And, and then I got to realize that when I do the mouth, you know, it's sort of like an oval shape. That oval shape is going to help me form the mouth more better. But make sure that this side of the face is a little bit wider and this side is a little bit less. So I got I do the, this eye over here. And then I'm going to do this eye over here. So I'm going to make this an old... An old guy. Usually when people are old, they start, their eyebrows change. There's a lot of frowning, a lot of detail, age. I would say age detail, especially the top of the forehead. You know, so, and then just less hair on the top of the head. And then I'm going to do strong cheekbones because usually when people get old, you can see more of their bone structure. And then maybe he's smoking. I know my great grandfather, he used to have like a, a pipe. He would smoke a pipe. And, uh,. And then right here would be the ear line. 
straight down to where the jaw is. But I still got to make more aging on, on his face because this is a uh, an old character so add more wrinkles so when people get old always try to remember that the you know the planes of the face and the wrinkles are going to be more visible. They're going to, especially the bags underneath the eyes. And then the top of the eyebrows. There's a lot of aging, so you have to keep in mind that um, older people So I think I did pretty well for an old character over here. And then here's the pipe. I gotta make this. In order to do that pipe, you can use a cylinder, you know, a small cylinder shape, and then give it a roundness in the bottom. And but I actually visualized before I did this pipe, I actually visualized it. And remember, visual effect is very important when you're drawing. Visualize shapes. Because that's what's going to help you improve on your artwork. So let's see. The neck would be around here. And I got to do the Adam's apple. And then, of course, underneath the neck, there's going to be a lot of lines. Because he's old. And we want to make sure we get that. But then again, this whole drawing that I did here... Um, it, you know, I, can't, I won't be able to finish the rest because of this face over here. But I wanted to do something with this, this technique because it looks so good, especially on the side over here. But the composition of this mm, is not that, that great. Um, but since I love drawing faces and, you know, heads and all that stuff, so... Um, I might as well just finish it. Okay, so that came out pretty good. I remember the um, the David Finch method is the regular access lines. Always remember to use the David Finch and. I'm going to go over, trust me, because I like the, and today when I get a chance, I'm going to look at my DVD by David Finch and study the way he draws from the inside to the outside, because I have his DVD in drawing the head, <clears throat> and I got that like a long time ago. Okay, so that came out pretty good. All right, so... Let's look at this drawing, and you can tell I'm already seeing it already. And that's why I wrote do again. Uh, there's just too much hair here. And uh, the shape of the face looks too cartoony. Um, but I'm going to do something different with this. So I might consider using the Loomis method for this, or just the regular lines, the access line. Let's see how it goes. So... I can tell I messed up on the eyes. This is a very old drawing, and hopefully when I erase all this, it doesn't turn into a big mess. Because when you erase, that's when your drawing starts getting really messy. So, then I'll just erase a little bit of this, the outline of this hair. If I would have had a light box, all I have to do is put it, you know, in a light box and fix this and do this over again. But let's see what happens. I'm going to try to fix this. Um, there's a lot of hair. So I, I think I exaggerated too much the hair on this. So I'm going to fix it again. Make it better.
And the ears definitely need to be fixed. So as you can see, I made it look like sort of like a ghost image. I didn't race it too much because um, I want to be able to see, you know, the features and what did I do wrong on this drawing. So, so I'm going to get my ruler. I don't know where I put that ruler now. Where did I put that ruler? I know I have it here someplace. I think I have it here. Let me see. It's that plastic ruler I was using yesterday. what I did with it should be here it's just I got so much paper here so all right it looks like I'm gonna have to like oh, okay I have another one though and I found my cough drops wow can't believe I found my cough drops it was right underneath uh, all this paper I have so. All right, I guess the other ruler, I'll probably find it. Oh, here it is. This, I like this one better. All right, so I need this one. And of course I'm gonna use a pencil better because a black pencil, I won't be able to erase that. So here's the center right here. And this will be her eyes right here. I'm gonna work with the indication of her eyes. So I'm gonna indicate her eyes. At the same time, I'm gonna shape it because that's gonna help me figure out how I'm gonna go down with the nose. So the nose I did before was too high up. So I'm going to do the nose a little bit low here. And then the mouth, of course, I got to imagine that I'm seeing the filter and then the top of the mouth would be around here. Then the center of the mouth would be around here. Then here's the, the bottom. And if I want, I could just do an oval just to make more th you know, things more simpler. So the, the proportions of the face, um, it still needs to be improved, but I gotta make sure that I'm gonna work with the features first. So I'm gonna do the features, work with her eyes, her eyelid, her other eyelid here, and the bridge of the nose will be around here. And since we did the eye line here and the eye in the center of the line, remember that the bridge of the nose is gonna be on a top, okay? Now there are times that sometimes you'll use the horizontal line for the eyebrows first, like the Loomis method. And then the bridge of the nose will go underneath, never on top of the eyebrow line. It's gonna look ridiculous so you always got to remember these things because of the length and because of the um, remember this is what stands out the nose the first thing you see on a person is the nose the bridge of the nose that's important so this will be the bottom of her nose right here and i'm going to do her nostrils right here and other nice nostrils over here I'm going to work with the corner of the nose. And then work with the center of her lip. And do her eyebrows. A little lower since I fixed the eyes gotta fix the eyebrows of course 
So now um, what I'm going to do is pretty much like the Loomis method. And I'm going to pretend that I see, you know, the circle pretty much of the Loomis method, even though I didn't use the Loomis method. But I'm going to pretend that I see the cheek lines here, right here, and then, and then the other cheek lines over here. And then I'm going to see the planes also on her face. I'm going to actually see it in my head, the planes. And then right around here would be the shape of her face. I gotta be careful because she's got a lot of hair on this side. So I'm gonna measure her side of her head would be here and actually see it. And right there would be the other side of her face right here. Straight down to where the chin is. Maybe it's a little bit off. I'm gonna just bring it in just a little bit closer. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I got the hair on this side. And uh, so far it looks better than before. See, the nose is correct. Except I got to fix, you know, do it more petite, like more feminine, the nose. Smaller. And then also I got to fix her eyes. It looks like some of the uh, paper got stuck in the candy. Wow. I can feel it in my mouth. Bad move. Well, a little paper is not going to kill me. So it'll just go in my stomach, digest, and I guess in two hours or three hours, it'll go straight out. So if you eat paper by mistake, a little piece of paper is not going to kill you. But sometimes when you eat, um, you know, you open a candy wrap and sometimes it's like a, and it happens, trust me. But it's been happening for like a long, long time sometimes because uh, usually the candy wraps, the paper gets stuck and you can actually feel it in your mouth when you, I think I swallowed one piece, but I felt a couple, but I took it out of my mouth. I hate when that happens, my God. All right, so remember that I did the hair to exaggerate it. So all I got to do is the outline. The only problem with this hair is that it's a little bit exaggerated. Um, um, and remember, this was this is an old drawing, which I didn't know how to do hair that good. So um, I exaggerated too many lines, even though it's got rhythm. It's got rhythm, but it's just too many lines. But I guess I can get away with this. I'm not really sure. And again, I'm not working for any company. So this is just, you know, a rough sketch that I did. So, so I don't have to worry about. But I do notice these things or the mistakes that I do in my drawings. Because, you know, you can spot out your mistakes little by little. So I'm going to do her eyes. Uh, I'm going to use, you know, the square shape method to do the eyes very lightly. And uh, I should be able to fit in a nice shaped circle for the iris of her eye. And I think I maybe probably I did it too 
big but it doesn't matter I could just fix that a little bit there and just bring it in a little bit there you go and fix her lips a bit her cheek lines Now I could just make this a little bit darker with a uh, black pencil. So I'm going to start with the outline of her hair. And I'm going to see if I can do the layers more better uh, of her hair and give her more flow and more rhythm in the hair. Because like I said, hair is not easy. So hair takes a lot of time to do. So I'm gonna, then over here, fix it a little bit, here, 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 and here. So what I'm doing is sort of like how you use in the ink, you outline with the ink. So I'm doing it with a black pencil. It's um, something that I figure out that, well, if people do it with the, with the ink, I can probably do it with a, a nice, sharp black pencil. And the neck would be around here. And she's got like a scarf. Just make sure I'm gonna make that scarf. And then I'm gonna make a lot of dark areas right there. And this will be the bridge of her nose. And fix the nostrils. And nostrils are not easy to do, so and I think I gotta like um, just bring the lip just a little bit down. I don't want to exaggerate too much the lips. Just want to make it a nice full lip. Let's fix the um, top of her eye and the uh, uh, the eyelashes on top is thick because of the eyelashes. So the top of the eye is thick. Always remember the top of the eye is thick because the eyelashes. And women sometimes they wear a lot of mascara on the uh, on the top and in the bottom. Let's do her iris. The pupil needs to be fixed on this side. You can tell that the pupil is not correct, but I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it. There you go. The eyelid. And remember, there's sort of like a plane that comes out. From here, I'm gonna make at least some aging underneath the eyes. You can draw a beautiful woman, but add age to make her look really mature. So, All I gotta do is erase these construction lines that I don't need. 
because otherwise it's gonna it's gonna look like she's she has some type of cross design there. So since she's got a lot of hair on the top, um, I gotta do you know a lot of cast shadow underneath the hair bangs especially around in between the hair bangs. There's, there's gonna be a lot of cast shadow. So I'm gonna make sure that I do plenty of cast shadow. So that way she'll look more three-dimensional. And underneath the neck also, but mostly on this side. I'm gonna make it more darker here. Here where the plane of the nose, a little bit darker. A little darker here. Dark here. And just do a very, very light tone. Just a very light. Go back up again and make it a little bit more darker. The iris definitely needs to be a little bit darker also because of the uh, shadow of the, um, the eyelashes. So... And remember, which I mentioned before, that when you're drawing the eyes, the eyebrows in the front, including the, um, the eyelashes, are going to give the effect on the iris of the eye a little bit darker. A lot of, you know, it's sort of like a cast shadow and a little bit of a highlight. Um, because that's the first thing that actually comes out out of the face. Uh, the nose and the eyebrows. And like I said, the most important thing in a face, if you know, for any artist, and I would say in the movies also, the first thing that stands out in a person's face is actually the, the nose and the eyes. You know, the like this whole segment here. That's what stands out. Okay, um, of course the mouth is important, you know, but that's the first thing that many artists actually notice when they're drawing faces is actually the nose and the eyes. That's what actually stands out and it speaks. I wouldn't say speak, but it speaks out in a way that it has to be drawn first and that's more of the attention. It's like if you're looking at a beautiful woman and you're looking at her, at her and you're, you know, just talking with her and just, you're actually admiring the beauty of her eyes, her lips, you know, her eyebrows. Uh, and you just can't help it because that's the, that's the way nature is. You, you'll start looking at a woman and right away you notice the, the beauty of, of a woman, especially the, the nose, the eyes, and especially the lips. And now I'm going to uh, dark a little bit the, uh, the outside of her hair. Okay, I think that looks better now. Way better than before. So I'm going to save this one and do something with this later. Okay, now we're gonna fix this one. This was a, a friend of mine on Facebook. It's a little old, you can tell by the paper. 
And I gotta admit, I should have actually put all these drawings behind the plastic or something. Some of it look okay. Um, but you can tell that there's something very wrong here. You see the head, the three-quarter view did not come out so good. Um, I think I got to add a little bit more outline here, just a little bit, just to make the shape of the head because it's, it didn't come out right. And plus, remember, when there's a lot of hair like this, um, it's supposed to be at least up to here. So it looks flat. You know, if you look at this drawing, I didn't do it so correct. And the lips have to be fixed. But what I could do is, I could probably um, fix it little by little, and I'm I'm probably gonna ink it. You know that way it won't be be destroyed. I I kind of messed up here underneath the lip here. So so let's see. Let's get started. Let's fix this one. See how. And it was a shame. It was a very good friend of mine. She liked it. You know, she actually, you know, so, but I'm pretty sure a professional artist is that probably a friend of hers. And I'm pretty sure she knows. Um, they probably criticized it. Who knows? So in a way, I felt kind of embarrassed posting this, but I'm going to actually fix it and make it better. And then... So this is a, a friend of mine from Facebook that she's sort of like a rock alternative, you know, she's into rock alternative. She has her own band. She's very popular in South America, Colombia and Spain and stuff. So um, we're like good friends. I actually dedicated a group for her on Facebook. Um, her name is um, Alicia Garcia and she's like a rocker, you know, like an indie rocker. She does like a, a lot of classic rock, that's for sure. The problem is that um, she does something different with her music. So it's not going to be the same, like, old school rock and roll. It's just, you know, you know, she does more, like, indie rock. But I've seen pretty much what she posts. She likes Jimi Hendrix. She likes Janis Chaplin. She likes The Who. She likes all these great... And she's from Colombia. And... Um, she's got her own videos and you can check out my library I got a lot of stuff from her okay so I, I fixed a little bit the top of her head so what I got to do is the center and I'm probably going to use either the Serpino technique for this or probably David Finch Oh, several people. Let's see what happens. This will be her, like right here will be her eyebrow line. This will be her eye line right here. And then the nose line should be around here. Then the mouth will be here. And then the chin will be here. So I'm going to see if I can make this more better. Let's see, you know. I mean, the paper is so old. And this was like way, way back. And I have a feeling that if I keep erasing, it will probably damage the whole paper. Excuse me, guys. These allergies, cold, whatever. Oh, my God. It's just making me really messed up. It's probably the change of weather. Who knows? I'll put a little mix to see if it helps. Okay, so I, I kind of mapped out a little bit the shape of her hair. So it, it, looks, a, it looks better here. I got to admit, and this is the thing, when you're, when you're copying people... You, the, you know, especially on hair, it actually comes out really good because you're giving it a lot of uh, rhythm on the hair. And this is the only thing I'm happy about this drawing is the hair because she's got very beautiful hair. And I started like really concentrating on her hair a lot. And uh, she came out really beautiful uh, with her, especially the, the rhythm of the hair. Okay, so I'm going to continue. I'm going to try to fix this this part of her face over here. So this will be the bridge of the nose over here. Then I'm going to slice off the side of her face over here. And then bring in the eye socket here. And then she's got, you know, big cheekbones. 
especially when she smiles. You can see the cheekbones actually move up. And then I'm going to do the chin straight down. Okay, so I'm going to try to remember how she looks like because I have her already in my mind. I know how she looks like because she is a, a good friend of mine and we're always sharing videos with each other. So, um, so I know how she looks like, you know, in my mind, in my imagination, I would say. Okay, so her eye would be... I'm going to do her eye on this side and then the eyelid then then I'm going to fix this eye over here and then the eyelid over here and she had like a, an expression on her face like look at me I'm here it was very beautiful Colombian woman She's popular, so look her up. She's uh, Allison Garcia, something like that. Just look, just Google indie pop star from South America. Um, Spanish indie rock star, Allison Garcia. And I tell her, hey, man, if you learn English, you can you can actually make a lot of great songs for the United States also. But then again, you know, there were a lot of rockers, Spanish rockers that sing in English and they never. It's like, I don't know, they're, the doors are closed. And I already told you the reason why is because all these other uh, loonies that don't know how to play music in Spanish, like reggaeton is actually closing the doors to all these great, great, talented artists, whether they're from Spain or Argentina. I'm going to celebrate if the day when the music industry actually considers that reggaeton was a big mistake and no more reggaeton, I'm actually going to open a, a bottle of champagne and celebrate because I really can't stand that music. It's not music. Many of these... um. These singers, they can't even play a guitar or a piano, and they can't even sing right. And they actually sing some of the most vulgarous things that you can think of. Plus, they degrade women in, with their lyrics. So, yeah. They're really sickening. It's like very, very bad talent. They can't sing right. And it's a shame because she's got a lot of talent. Uh, this girl right here, she's a fantastic, her vocals, her voice, you know, it's not just only her too. There's a lot of Spanish females. There's Christina Rosenvig, that she's also a fantastic rocker and she's from Spain and she's got a beautiful voice. There's this beautiful song that I like about her. She sings very beautiful for her. The song is called Echo. Um, you can look it up. You can Google Christina Rosenvig Echo. Um, and uh, she did a fantastic acoustic. And it's a very, very, you know, mencali. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Like sort of like mencali. Very sort of like a, a folk sad song kind of. But very beautiful. I mean, you know, she sings very, very beautiful. And it's a shame, you know, it's a shame that we got all these great Spanish artists that they're not being known because of all these other idiots that, that make other Hispanics look really bad. And I'm sick of it. I guess the people that actually listen to this kind of music really need their head to be examined. Like, you know, especially twerking, like a totally, you know, I can't stand twerking. I think it's really stupid twerking. Okay, so she came out way better and I'm not going to ink it because so far 
it didn't come out that bad. Um, so all I gotta do is just fix the... Uh, by the way, this thing here that you see here, this is a drawing, you know, the picture that I, I did the reference from, she was, she's a painter, she also paints. Uh, and she's more like, sort of like an expressionist or more like abstract art. So that's that was her painting. She's, so she does a lot, you know, a lot of feminine paintings also. Um, so I just got to fix a little bit, some details here to make it look better. Let's fix this drawing here. So yeah, she draws, you know, um, you know, stuff like um, abstract. She's sort of like a, an expressionist. Her favorite artist, believe it or not, is Frida. And she loves Frida. And she likes Andy Warhol and all those artist is very liberal she's very um very liberal so um she loves you know the arts of picasso um she likes van gogh and she also likes salvador dali also she likes so she likes a lot of Renaissance art, you know, she, uh, she's very creative. So look her up, you know, she does her own, her own artwork. Okay, I think this came out a little better. I just got to erase a little bit. I kind of messed up where the socket of the eye is. So now these are things you're going to uh, end up finding. You're going to end up Especially drawing the corner of the eye is not easy. So I'm just gonna, it's a good thing that I like this pencil eraser because you can actually erase details, a lot of details, stuff that you don't need, like all these lines. And erase underneath the nose a little bit. And I'm going to fix her nose just a little. She's got sort of like a very petite looking nose. And then fix her cheekbones just a little bit. She's got sort of like, um, you know, the same outline of... Um, Sophia Lorena, kind of. So she's a very wonderful person. Every time when she makes a like a, a video, she actually sends me her link so I can check out, so I could comment on her video. So yeah, now it looks way, way better. I'm just gonna maybe dark a little bit on the outside over here, probably around her head. There's a lot of dark areas here. I'm just gonna fix this, the flow, the rhythm of her hair. She's got a lot of curly split ends also underneath. So it came out so good. I think I'm going to post it in her group. It's actually my group because I created the group. So, so hopefully she'll like it.
She's got style, especially when you look at her pose for her album covers. She's got a lot of style. She, you know, she's very creative. And that's why I like, I like creative people. I, I think, you know, watching videos of people twerking their butts and, you know, just dancing to stupid music. It, you know, it just kind of gives you the idea where is society coming to, you know. At least when you listen to her music, it's got meaning. It's it's very creative, you know. So hopefully she'll like this this drawing I did. Okay, I just I think I exaggerated too much the um the outline over here. Just gotta make sure it's just a little bit erased right there. All right, yeah, that came out fantastic. Way better than before. And that's the thing, when you go back, always look at back your old drawings and you can learn by the mistakes you've done before and you can correct them, okay? So that looked out, that came out pretty good. So let's fix this dude over here. And this is uh, something like, uh, I don't know, some kind of kiss character that I try to create. Um, but the face is not done right, so... This was like way, way back. And now that I see this, and now that I've learned more techniques and methods, now I'm beginning to see the mistakes that I've done before. So I'm going to fix this, probably erase a little bit of the features and then the shape of the face. But at the same time, I'm going to make it look like a ghost image because if I make it like a ghost image, I'll be able to see, you know, the, the character design, the markings on his face, whatever. So I'm going to not completely erase it, but see a little bit of the details. You know what I mean? Like make it like a ghost image. So then I know what the hell I'm doing afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that I see the Loomis method at the same time. And I'm going to start visualizing a circle. Actually, I think I did it too high. Hold on. Let me see something. And I just let me go back to the. Uh, let's review this one right here. Okay. All I have to do is go back on my construction book, look at it quick, and that's it. Then I know what to do. So. So I know I gotta, you know, fix from the top of the head all the way down. So that's the that's the part that I didn't do right before. So, and you can tell the eyes are a little bit too low. So it's like too close to the nose, and you know the proportions. And I gotta remember that, just like the Loomis Loomis explains that the face is three parts. You know, part from the eyebrow to the nose and to the chin. So I always gotta remember that. And then I can actually uh, do the, the circle here. So I like visualize the circle. So I'm going to train my eye to spot out the technique little by little. I'm going to see it. And uh, this will be the mouth right here and the chin. And I'm going to do the nose. And here is where the eyes are going to be at. Well, actually, wait a minute. Yeah, this will be the eyebrow, eyebrows here. And then the eyes will be here. So I'm going to indicate the eyes a little bit. And I got to make sure is three eyes length. So I'm going to have to erase this over here. Okay. And let me see what else we got. I'm going to put this here so I, that will help me out. I'm going to work with the jaw. Bring it up. I 
and over here bring it up let's just the mouth the nose do the eyes <laughs> and then we'll do the side of the head cheek lines and the ears Okay, it looks a little bit better than before. At least there's no, not too much hair. So now I'm gonna work with the features. The nose. Bottom of the nose. Corners of the nose. For some reason or something, I don't think uh, this is going to come out exactly what I want. It's like the way I want it to come out. Um, but let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, I, sh I should have sticked with the uh, regular Loomis method, even though this is a little bit close to the Loomis method, except that the nose is a little bit lower. Um, and you, you tend to actually spot out these things here. So maybe if I bring in the face just a little bit closer. Because I think I did the face too wide. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I did the face too wide. I can do the eyebrows here. Then I'm gonna have I'm gonna, since I made the face a little bit in, so I'm gonna have to erase all these outlines here. So that's what I'm gonna do: erase this part right here, and then erase all this construction line that I don't need anymore. Now it's looking better now. So let's fix up this um So I'm gonna make him sort of like a an ugly barbarian type of guy. And then do some type of brace. I'm still gonna do the same markings that you know like the the character design that I did before it looked like kind of like the kiss makeup kind of so I'm gonna do that also I just gotta remember how I did it before since I did so much erasing on this
Maybe do it on one side, on the face. Let's see what happens. I just wanna, I just wanna make sure that the planes of the face stand out also. And then I'm gonna, he's got like a, a scary look, so I gotta make him have that scary look. There you go. This side of the eye also is really wide. And I'm gonna measure, before I go on, I'm gonna measure, because I don't wanna make one eye bigger than the other one, so. The iris of the eye would be here. And the eyelid is gonna be a bit closer, you know why? Because the eyebrows is going down, so. Since the eyebrow is going down, so the eyelid is going to actually be closer to the eye. So I have to keep that in mind. And then do some aging on him. All right. So right here would be the ears. But since he's got a lot of hair, I'm gonna cover that that side of the ear and this side. Just a hint. You're gonna see a hint of the earlobe because he's got a lot of hair. This is, you know, a, a regular Viking, you know. So, and we all know that Vikings have a lot of hair. And maybe I'll add a beer on this guy. I don't know yet, but let's see what happens. And then we got the roots of the hair is very important. And always remember the flow, the rhythm of the hair is very, very important. Behind the neck is going to be darker because there's a lot of hair in front right here. So always remember the back of the neck is going to be dark because you want to make your drawing, uh, you know, three dimensional. And there's a lot of dark areas right here underneath the ears and straight down to where the neck is. Okay, so before I go on, first I wanna map out the hair first. And I just wanna get it out of the way because the hair is not easy, so. Oh, let me um, erase this part right here. Okay. Yeah, the hair is a real mission to do because you got to really find out the direction where the hair is going, the flow, the rhythm of the hair. And it's like Romero says, you don't want to make the hair look spaghetti-like. That's a, that's a definitely no-no. So you want to make your hair realistic, you know, make it look flowy, rhythm, balance, you know, balance the hair also. That's an, another thing he talks about is balance of the hair and how it flows and since I'm doing this out of my head it's you know I don't have any reference so I'm trying to do my best uh, trying to figure out how the hair is going to look on this guy so he's on this side of his face he has like a sort of like a kiss makeup you know like something very I don't know if you guys are into that black metal. You ever seen the, the black metal uh, singers that they actually paint their face like like with black mascara and white all over the face, whatever. So, yeah. Believe it or not, I, I saw a documentary that the Vikings, way, way back, um, they used to use a lot of uh, makeup on their faces, especially when they haunt, haunted they, they were sort of like, kind of like very tribal, like, they were very similar to the, um, to the Indians, the, the, the customs, very similar. They were very nature, the Vikings, they were into nature, and then at the same time, they were, um, they, many of them traveled in the woods, you know, like in the forest, and when they haunted, they used to uh, color their faces 
they will actually use mascara, some type of black, you know, I would say like some black, uh, I don't know how you call it, um, there's a name for it, but I know there's a name for it, but it's like black uh, mascara that they used on their faces and uh, they used to haunt. Um, so many of the Vikings were also kind of like, you know, fishermen, great navigators, that's for sure. That's how they actually end up going to different parts of um, different continents, like in Europe. And um, so I just wanted to, I don't know if you guys remember that movie, um, Braveheart. Remember the Vikings uh, and Braveheart? And those were Vikings, believe it or not, the ones that fought the British. And uh, I think they were called the Scots. Yeah, the Scots. Or the Picts or the Cox. And, yeah, the Scots or the Picts, something like that. And uh, when they were in battle, they actually painted their, you know, their faces. When they were ready for war, they would actually paint their faces. So that's what I'm doing right now, a Viking furious pissed off Viking here with a with an evil look in his eye and he's ready to kick ass this, this part of the face has to be a little because of the cast shadow there's a lot of cast shadow He's got a lot of hair, so I got to do a lot of cast shadow on the face. And then the helmet. I'm not going to do the helmet. I'm just going to do a brace. Like, you know how the Indians would have like a kind of like a ribbon on top of their forehead. But this is more like a brace. Like a metal brace. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do some type of design on it. do this part right here finish this part fix this hair a little bit and since he's all raggedy kind of so I gotta make sure Vikings were always known to be messy dirty and that's the truth from the fact believe it or not they used to be really messy. Um, so their hair was always, you know, and you can see it in the movie Braveheart. Um, the hair was like really, really messy. And then their clothes were sort of like animal skin. They used to use animal skin in those days back. Now I'm not gonna do the rest of his body because right here I'm, you know, since I did the head, I only could probably do like maybe the half of the shoulders here, that's about it. Because I'm not going to have that much room to do the rest of his body. Just probably the shoulders that I'm probably going to end up doing. So this came out pretty cool. And it took a lot of work. Believe it or not, this wasn't easy. Because it was an old drawing and I actually transformed it into something more better now. See? And that's the thing. You could you know, fix your drawings. You know, go back to your drawings and check your old drawings and you can fix it. And if you're afraid that it might get ruined because it, you're erasing too much, well, you just go slow at it. You know, just the uh, same thing like I'm doing with this one. I'm actually doing it slow. And then look how good that came out. See, you don't see too many smudges. If you erase too hard, you're going to damage the paper, of course. 
And right now, believe it or not, I'm just using, I'm not using professional paper. I'm not using, you know, Bristol board paper like the real professional artists use. I'm using actually paper that comes from the office, you know, office paper. And it's amazing that I haven't ripped this up yet with all this erasing and fixing and molding and, you know, fixing the face and all that. So you just got to be patient and, uh, and you'll see that you will prevail. I'm going to use these big names here. So yeah, it came out pretty cool. I just got to fix a little bit the outline of the cheek lines. Underneath the lip. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, use a small black pencil uh, because I don't want to waste the black, the bigger pencil. So I'm just gonna, this what gives your drawing more depth, especially, you know, a three, a, sort of like a three dimensional, 3D look. Remember, three dimensional is like a 3D look. So you want to make your drawing look really stand out when you're adding a lot of cast shadow, a lot of black areas. In this case, I'm not doing any ink on this. I'm just working with black pencil. So it's the same thing like if I was using the ink. And the reason why I'm using this is because the inking takes a long time. So I'd rather use a black pencil. Maybe in the future, I will do some stuff in inking because I got a lot of stuff that has to do with inking and stuff. So. I it's just, you know, to make a video with inking, it's just going to take a long time. And inking is not easy because you really got to have a lot of patience to do inking. But at least the black pencil gives you the, the same effect. Uh, and I've had people that tell me that the black pencil actually gives it a nice black and white feel to it. And then the outline also got to be fixed yeah all right that came out pretty cool i gotta admit that came out awesome all right so i'm gonna save that and uh now let's fix this one now this one um what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to copy this because the paper is so old. You can tell it's all ripped up. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip this. Uh, let's do this for later. And then we'll continue by drawing it again. And first, what I want to do is this character. Since he's going to be a little bit easier to do. Actually, no. You know what? I'll do this three-quarter view character that I did. And then I'm going to start with the same Loomis method. So I got like so many options, so many techniques to use in order to fix this whole drawing. So I got to look at it again, what I did, what type of design I did on him. And uh, this will be the center of his face right here. And this will be the eyebrow line. And this will be the nose. And this will be the chin. So I'm going to, instead of indicating this, you know, the length of the head, I'm going to start first with the nose. And, but I, before I start the nose, I want to do an indication where the eyes are going to be at. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with the nose first. 
Because that's the first thing that Romero actually tells everybody that you should start the news. Very important to start the news first. All right. Then you indicate the side of the head here. And, and then you indicate the side of the head here. And then you start working with the side of the face over here. Little by little, you're molding the face. Okay, so this will be the, the top of the head. And uh, I'm gonna do pretty much like uh, the David Finch I think that's the way it should be done. The cheek lines right here. And I just got to remember that this side is going to be less. The portion of the face is going to be less on this side. And this is, you're going to see more portion on this side of the head. So, I, and it doesn't matter if the circle is too small. So, because I'm going to add more shape in the back of the head. So it really doesn't matter. As long as you get the right proportions. Okay, so before I go on with the ear line, um, I wanna make sure I get this right. I'm gonna do the eye here. I could, you know, scribble in the eye. And that's one of my favorite methods in scribbling. Scribble in the eye, the planes, and uh, the mouth. bottom lip and possibly I'm gonna to have to make that chin a little bit wider in the bottom so I'm gonna erase this portion here okay so I'm not gonna do the uh, the design on him yet because I want to analyze this to see if it's correct And I don't want to make it look like Loomis style, so I want to make it very comic book style. So one thing, that's one thing I got to make sure, make it look comic book style. horns because I did like two horns on each side of the head so it might look a little bit like dwarf mode from Star Wars a little bit kind of I'm gonna try not to make it look like him because I I'm always you know I always want to come out with my own characters but sometimes they'll end up looking like somebody else's characters but that's okay because that's your creative mind, you know what I mean? But if you look at Marvel and DC, you're gonna notice that many of their characters kind of look the same. So that's nothing you shouldn't be worrying about because they also make a lot of mistakes. I've seen many of their characters that kind of look the same, so. Like for example, Beast Monster or Beast Guy, whatever that, from the X-Men looks a lot like Wolverine, so so they always try to do something very similar to many of the characters that they create. And it means that you're being creative. You're doing, you know, like my character looks like Darth Mode kind of, or maybe like Daredevil kind of, or like another version of Daredevil or something. Um, and if I were to do all this here, it will definitely look like a version of the Darth Mode. And uh, the difference with my character is that I did like sort of like gargoyle, gargoyle ears. 
So my character is a little bit different. So, so far, what I'm going to do is, instead of making him a smile, I'm going to make him serious. That's what I'm going to do. Make him serious. So, remember, you got so many options <clears throat> to transform your character design. And that's what this is, people, character design. So it looks like sort of like one of those comic book faces from Neil Adams, kind of. And that's what I always try to do. I like to draw like Neil Adams and Alex Ross. Alex Ross takes a lot, you know, because he draws very realistic. But if you look at, if you study Neil Adams artwork and uh, Alex Ross, they're kind of similar, but... Alex Rocks actually takes the field of comic book drawing. You know what I mean? And no, actually Neil Adams takes more of the comic book field and then Alex Ross is more realistic. So I said that wrong. Okay, so now I'm going to fix the opening of the eye here. So he's pissed off. Makes this real better. I just gotta fix a little bit. I feel in a way that this part of the face needs to be improved. And what I could do is I could make this line like this. Let's just bring this in. The cheek line. And there you go. Yeah. Now it looks better. The proportions are way better now. So I think, not sure. I still got to fix the, the mouth to make it look like a three quarter view. And right here doesn't look right, so I gotta fix this here. There's always gonna be mistakes, trust me. There's always gonna be mistakes, but you'll learn from mistakes when little by little you will learn from errors. And now it looks way better. Okay. Now I could actually do these designs here if I want. And I'm going to do it more bigger this time, more exaggerated. And then maybe another one over here. So I'm going to actually color all this like in black. And then maybe shade a little bit of the face and it will look more three dimensional. So I'm going to go back, fix this a little bit better. The ears. And since this ear is pointing out this way, I'm going to fix this ear better. Like it's bending. That way it will give it the effect like this one. So I'm going to actually bring it out like this. The ears. And then I have my, there we go, it looks better now. And then I'm going to do the artery here and the neck. And shade this in. Okay, now I can continue with the black pencil. And uh, start working with the outline of the face and then work with my the inside of the face. 
or if I want, I could just start with the, the center of the face and then work with the outside of the face. It's so whatever you guys feel comfortable with. So here's the nose. And we'll go straight down to the mouth. Just make this a little thicker here. And cheek lines. fixed the uh, top of the head. And jaw. Now I can do the ears. Maybe do some cracked the bottom. A little bit cracked kind of. Just to make it look interesting. And just add another horn here. <clears throat> and you know what? Because it's, it, it looks a lot like dwarf mold. Uh, you know, even though I did the ears different. Um, and then this right here is maybe just do something different here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do something different here. Um, in the back of the hit, the skull, like he had some hair detail, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Make it more interesting and the hair coming out this way from the back. This is the neck, the Adam's apple and the artery, of course, and the back of the neck. I'm going to have to shade this in a little bit. Just fix the head a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is erase all these construction lines that I did before. And then start working with more details like adding more tone to the head. 
but I gotta be careful because this side is more darker because of the light reflection might be coming in from this side. So I'm gonna be careful with the horns also, make this more darker because of this side is darker. So before I do the tone, I, I wanna do, you know, shade in outside the head. And now that I did this character, I'm gonna erase him, you know, cross him out. And then I could actually do some toning over here a little bit darker because of the cast shadow and the highlights and where the nose is also around the lips here around underneath where the nose plane and just a little bit shade here that's it and then just make the the tone a little bit lighter on this part of the face just to make it a nice three-dimensional look so I'm gonna fix a little bit some toning on the hair also in the back of his hair and inside the ear is gonna be dark of course and some toning underneath the ear so you see now it looks more like um, three-dimensional I just got to outline the head a little bit better. All right, that came out pretty cool. Um, now I'm going to do this one. And this is a, sort of like a female character, sort of like a mutant. You can tell she's very wicked looking, kind of. But um, there's something wrong with this face. And I think I kind of messed up on this side of the face. So I'm going to have to start all over again, do her again. But I wouldn't probably do it here because I was just going to mess up the whole drawing. And plus, it, I'm going to probably rip this up afterwards. So let's begin with her. And let's put this one away. So I'm going to fix her face now. So I got to look at her and see where are the mistakes that I did. And of course, this drawing is like really old. So I want to make it better. Um, this side of the face doesn't look so right. So... And now that I know too much about the Loomis method and, and all these other techniques, I can see where I did the mistake already. See, this eye is a little bit too high over here. So I'm going to fix this part. Do it in pencil first. And then I'll work with it with black pencil. Okay, so I might consider using... Um, Possibly another method for this one. Let's see how it works out. Alrighty, let me see something. This will be the center of her face and then her eye line is going to be here the nose and the chin notice that usually when I work with the Loomis method the eyebrow line is usually here so if I want I can just do a little cross there to remind me that that's going to be the uh, eyebrow line so in order to do this one, I'm going to work with the outline of her face on this side right here. And 
bring it in all the way down to the bottom part right here. Just bring it in just to, because remember the, the shape of the face is not a big circle. So I got to remind myself that the circle, you slice off a bit of the circle on this side. So let's do that. And then I'm going to go up. This will be the bottom of the jaw. And very carefully, I'm going to see the jaw. But I'm going to do it lightly because this might, I might end up fixing it later on. So it's, it's best to do it lightly. Don't press down on the pencil. Otherwise, you won't be able to erase it. And... Um, This will be the eyebrow line. So I'll do those, that mask design that she has. goes in this way and while I'm at it I'm going to do those scars on her face right there okay so I worked with the outline of the face here and from the jaw so where the temple is the side of the head would be around here okay so I will actually would use sort of like, and I'm going to visualize this as using the David Finch method. Kind of like the way David Finch uses his, the planes of the face. So yeah, so far, so far so good. Then the ears will be around here. And I'm going to do everything lightly because I think that's the best way to go, do everything lightly. And then the hair, I'm gonna be very careful. I don't wanna to exaggerate too much the hair. So I'm gonna do sort of like an outline of the hair. And you can see I did some type of weird hairstyle on her. Very carefully. This is the back of the neck. And this is the front of the neck. And then as the hair goes down, it's very messy like, because she's sort of like a wicked sorcerer or something. And I gotta be careful with this is gonna be, the hair is gonna be pretty big. So I want to make sure that I do the outlines for the hair, the layers of the hair correctly done. And then at the same time, like maybe the top is going to have rhythm, but then as it goes down is, you know, the, the split ends is going to just go different directions. Like, it, like the hair is kind of messy kind of. So she's sort of like a wicked character that I created. So she's sort of like half beautiful on one side of the face and wicked on the other side of her face. Okay, so now I mapped out the face pretty good. So all I got to do is actually spot out where the bridge of the nose is, is over here, the outline of the nose over here. And then of course, I'm going to visualize this as a triangle shape. And this will be the corner of the nose. 
nostrils, the tip of the nose. Then right below here would be, and I got to be careful because I got to make this outline underneath the nose and the other side of the nose also. Right here with this will be the start of the top of her lip right here. Then the bottom right here. So I got the top of the lip and the bottom of the lip right here. So that's done. So far the proportions are looking phenomenal. Um, and I, I kind of like working with uh, the Loomis and the David Finch at the same time. So I'm sort of like mixing the technique. Loomis and David Finch at the same time. This will be the plane. I want to make sure that I do the eyes right here. I can also shade in the eye. This eyebrow a little higher. And this eyebrow just a little. So far, so good. The cheek lines would be around here. And then I got to fix this cheek line, which I already, what I like about this method is because you're, you're actually doing the whole side first. You know what I mean? So you already got that done. You just got to worry about the rest of the features. So I think I did the eyes too high. So I'm going to have to bring it just a little bit down a little bit to make it nice well proportioned so let me raise um this eye again and this eye and then just kind of like um kind of like spot out where the bottom of the eye would be at and then the top of the eye would be here so yeah that's more better now okay Okay, so now I can start um, doing more details. So she's got a lot of scars on her face. So she could be one of those wizard women that punishes some type of tribal mutant, a mutant tribal tribe or something. Uh, you could just, you know, make up something. Come out with your own ideas. Be creative. Fix this eye a little bit better. And then just make her, this time I'm gonna make some eyes on her, like she's really spooky looking. So it's gonna look way better than this, trust me, way better. So she, I'm gonna do the, the, layers of the hair which is important but i gotta be careful because she's got a lot of you know messy split ends in the bottom so i gotta follow the direction where that hair is going and plus i don't have any reference this is just a character i'm making up so if i would probably would have had some type of reference of hair, this style, of course. And this is something that just came out of my head. So this is my own creation. So I gotta like, be responsible for my own, you know, creation that I created here. And then I'm gonna make her neck a lot of scars like she's been bruised or something. 
a lot of bruises on her. Okay, so now I can go with more details. Corner of her nose. Fix her eye on this side. But I gotta be careful because this eye seems to be smaller on her side of the face over here. And the iris. Her eyebrows. Then make some cast shadow in between where the eyes from the bridge of the nose. So this this is there's gonna be a lot of stuff I gotta do here because there's a lot of detail, so I gotta be careful with her. And I gotta remember that this is sort of like metallic on the side of her face right here. So she's wearing some type of metallic helmet, like half helmet, I would say. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try to do something with this. And it's going to be a little bit different from the other drawing. Then I might do some type of design here or something. Let's see what happens. So I got, you know, this part of her face is done. I just got to add a little bit more cheek line. And I got to remember that this is... I got to do the oval method here to make it interesting. And do some outlines of the layers of the hair, of course. You gotta be careful with that. Do some layers. You know, give the hair rhythm, of course. And then her ears are is about here. Maybe I'll do like two pearls on the lobe of her ear to make it look more like feminine, kind of. Give me a minute, guys. I got to um, seriously do number one. So I'll be back.
All right, I'm back. Okay, so I'm gonna keep fixing more rhythm on her hair. And as I'm going down, you know, the hair is gonna go in different directions, of course, because the hair is falling down. And I, I try to make it sort of like messy, like I was, you know, mentioning before, because she's sort of like a wicked witch sorcerer or something. So I'm going to stop on the hair because I don't want to do too much details on the hair. I don't want to exaggerate it too much. Just make, I just want to make it simple. I know that when I reach the bottom of the hair, it's got more details, of course, and it's more darker and then a lot of cast shadow, but I'm going to worry about that later. I'm just going to do some, you know, rhythm of the hair. Okay. Then over here. And uh, I just want to make sure that the proportions are okay. So, so far it looks okay. Now I'm going to worry about the helmet. I'm going to make this dark underneath right here because it's three dimensional, especially here. So like, you know, when you look at the helmet, you'll see a little piece here and then a little piece here. And of course, all this is just, you know, three dimensional. And then um, this side of the face, I'm going to make it darker, of course. And this side, I'm going to actually... I should make this more darker and then make this more lighter. Yeah, I think, yeah, it would be better to make this part more darker. And then the light is coming here. And just add more details. So it looks pretty cool. It's coming out pretty good. I thought it was going to suck in the beginning, but no, yeah, it's just, I guess when you really concentrate with your drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start another video. I'm going to, we're going to work with this profile right here. And of course it's another character design, but I'm going to make him a little bit different, of course, but I want to finish off, um, this drawing that I'm doing right now, which I'm not too happy with this part of the helmet. Um, I got to fix this at least a little bit better. Just make the, the center of the helmet here better. And then just make this a little bit more bigger on this side. And then, yeah, now it looks way better. So even though I'm not too happy with this side, hold on. I'm never too happy. <laughs> Just playing with you guys. Uh, it's just sometimes, you know, you really got to um, concentrate with your drawing. Okay, so uh, this is metallic. So I got to make it look very, very metallic. Metallic, like Metallica. Metallica. I can't wait to um, get my next CD recorder and um, I'm going to make a playlist of Metallica and that's going to be fun. But I got to wait. I got to order it again because the one I have just, it decided to give up on me. So I have to get another one. And I'm going to make a cool playlist of Metallica for sure, for sure. So I'm going to have like all the great songs from Metallica.
I'm just going to add more details, especially in the bottom part of the hair. Not so much where the center of the hair. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that for now and just finish it off later on. Um, so that'll be it, guys. Um, we'll continue again. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Um, and we'll start all over again. So thank you for watching. And just keep practicing and good luck with your artwork.